Hi, I'm Norm Norlander. I had the opportunity to be at the North Umpqua Fly Tying Festival in Glide, Oregon this past September. Now, this festival is sponsored by the Umpqua Valley Fly Fishers, and it's planned to be an annual event. Now, you can check dates for next year at www.uvff.org. Take a look at the following video. It's one of several Norvice users from this fun event. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you here next year. My name is Ron Reinebach, and uh, today I'm going to do a modernized version of a popular trout fly called a elk hair caddis. And the reason that uh, it's modernized is we understand a little more about the insects than we did at one time. Some of the things I'm going to be using are, of course, elk hair, some uh, hair's ear dubbing, some furnace hackle, a little bit of uh, antron, we're going to put a shuck on it, and a rib. I usually prefer to use uh, gold wire, but today I happen to have some uh, Lagarton Silk Core Extra Fine Tinsel, so we'll use that. Okay, we're going to do a number 14. We have put the hook in the vise, and we're set to go. Now, lay our thread base, uh, take a turn around the finger, go ahead and start the thread, pop it off, no need for a scissor, lay our thread base back to the point of the, to the barb of the hook, and we're set to go. All right, first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of that antron on for a shuck. The reason for that is that uh, we understand now that when caddises come up and emerge, boom, they're off the water immediately if everything goes the way it should be. So the only time you're going to find a caddis on the water, which is where we're going to put it, is if something went wrong with emergence or it's come back to lay eggs, uh, in which event uh, it would then be available to the trout. So we're going to put a little bit of a shuck on there to make it look like it was trying to emerge and had a problem. So we've got basically kind of a cripple and it's taking it a little longer than usual to get up in the air and away. Therefore it has become a uh, viable target for the trout's stomach. All right, we we'll tie that right on top of the hook like so. Trim off the excess. And now we're ready to go as we would normally in doing an elk hair caddis. Uh, first so the first thing I'm going to put on is a rib. And we're going to put that rascal on there just like so. Okay, I want it just a little bit forward of the tie-in point for that shuck. Now, I'm going to get that back here out of the way on the material uh, holder. Put, do a little dubbing. I love doing this. This is so much easier than trying to uh, put the dubbing on thread the other way. Because all I have to do is spin this rascal and it's there. Okay, that should just about be enough. Now, we just bring this back, roll her right on there, and I'm going to take one turn behind the rib, like so. Put the rib back in the material holder, and go ahead and dub my body. Bingo, it's done. Just that easy. Okay, now, most of the time, folks will tell you, the recipes will tell you to tie your hackle in back here and wrap it forward. I don't do that, and there's a very simple reason for it. Uh, I want twofold. No, I want it to be durable. The second, I don't want to spend a lot of time fooling around with it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tie it in up here 
at the head and wrap back and you'll see why in a moment. So tie that in just like that. Get my thread out of the way. Wrap my hackle back. And the beauty of this is that many times with a stationary vise, you're trying to wrap your hackle, you can't see it on the offside. Depending upon the quality of the hackle, the stem twists on you and now it doesn't go on to look the way you want. With this, you just grab it, hold it up close, it doesn't really have an option, it has to go on the way you want. And then go ahead, spiral it back, and I don't know, maybe that's six or seven turns, something on that order, catch it with the rib. Now this is what makes the fly durable, and there's another benefit to this, because you'll see I'm just wrapping forward through the hackle, none of the hackle's being trapped. Now if you do it the, the uh, way most patterns say to do it, you wrap your hackle forward and then you counter wrap with your rib, you're going to tie hackle fibers down, you cannot avoid it, and when you finish tying the fly then you have to fool around going back and picking those out. That takes time and whether you're tying for production or you're tying for your own use, that's time that you could be using doing another fly rather than fooling around with this one unnecessarily. Okay, now we've got the hackle on and all we need to do is put some elk hair on there and I've already put some in the stacker, about the right amount. Okay, now I got one that's too long. I'm gonna get that rascal out of there, maybe. Okay, there we go. Now, hold this up here for size. I want it to be slightly beyond the hook bend and it's sizing up that way. So now I can grab it with my materials hand, set it on here, come back, catch that, do a pinch wrap or a, a uh, soft loop, however you wish to describe it. Take about four or five nice tight turns right on top of each other, raise these ends up, go ahead and make a little bit of a tapered head like so, do my whip finish, now, you'll see a lot of folks doing a whip finish. They get to this point and they go sticking some kind of a tool in that loop. That's one more tool you have to reach out, grab, use, put away, find the next time. That's nonsense. Just keep your forefinger in there, pull gently on it, let it slide off. There it is. You've got two blades. They both cut. There's no need to be snipping anything. Reach up, lay it against the hook, cut your thread and you've got that part of it accomplished. Now, the reason that you use the hair as long as it is, is you see how easily I'm separating what I want to cut off from what I want to keep. If I've cut this short, then you have to spend time sorting it out. Again, time wasted, you could be do so doing something better with it. Oh, now you want to snip with your scissor. Hold it in here at the same angle as the hook eye. Come right up here, lay it against the hook eye, reach up, and uh, <laughs> you want steady hands, which you may or may not have depending on your age. Anyway, bingo, there you are. Now, one final little detail. Come back here, reach in with just enough scissor opening to get the stem of that, snip that off so you don't cut a bunch of other stuff off. Get rid of that. Now, if you want that to be more, most effective, you probably want it to be down in the water a little more so that shuck can show. All right, or you can do this on stream. Turn it over, get it right up here, reach in here with your scissor and cut the hackle just off the bottom, like so. Now, that should sit right down in the surface film and be very effective. We're gonna snip us a little bit more. There we go. And the finished fly looks just like that. And there you go. Are we all, we got it? Okay. And we're there. All right, very good.